Welcome to the Peter King Podcast, a different sort of podcast today and this week. I'm joined by Dr. Celine Gounder, who is the now widow of America's preeminent soccer reporter, Grant Wall. Uh, Grant died in Qatar on Friday night covering the Argentina-Netherlands World Cup game. Um, and uh, Celine Gounder has agreed to be uh, on the show just to explain exactly what happened and to talk about the life and legacy of her late husband. Um, for those who have not seen uh, Dr. Gounder, she's a clinical associate professor of medicine and infectious disease at NYU. Uh, she was a member of the Biden-Harris transition team's COVID advisory board. Uh, she's a physician, medical journalist, and also a senior fellow at the Kaiser Family Foundation. And Celine, in what must be an impossibly difficult time, I appreciate you joining me for a conversation about the life and the legacy, and unfortunately, uh, the death of your husband, Grant Wall. Thank you, Peter. Um, can we just start by basically identifying what you believe now actually happened on Friday night when Grant was stricken uh, in a press area at the World Cup game that he was covering? Yeah, I'll, I'll walk you through what happened. Um, after I heard the news, um, Gabriel Marcotti, who's a, a close friend of Grant's, also a soccer journalist, called me um, early evening on Friday and told me what he had witnessed. Uh, two of Grant's other friends um, were following the ambulance that had taken Grant to the hospital. Uh, and so I was then waiting uh, for another hour or so until I got a call from the hospital with the news. Um, and then it took a little while to figure this out, um, what had happened. Um, so as soon as I had gotten this news and shared it with my family, I reached out to um, friends in the administration, the White House and the State Department immediately kicked into gear, reached out to the U.S. ambassador in Qatar, and um, started the process to get him repatriated. And um, everybody really bent over backwards to make this happen as quickly as possible. Uh, FIFA and U.S. soccer also um, assisted in all of this. And we had the body um, transported back to JFK. Uh, he arrived uh, yesterday morning, early morning, and this would um, have been this would have been early Monday morning. Early Monday morning, yeah, December twelfth. And we met the casket, um, and then the New York City Medical Examiner's Office uh, was also there um, to meet him and we then went back to the medical examiner's office they uh prepared the body so that i could um with my family um see grant for one last time and uh then they performed the autopsy yesterday and i have to say having grant back in the u.s was such a relief having his his autopsy handled by um my colleagues, um, the New York City Medical Examiner's Office is staffed by physicians from NYU, and it's located right between NYU and Bellevue. So this felt like home, you know, as close to home as this was going to be. And they um, gave me a call um, yesterday evening. They tried to get this done as quickly as possible um, and um, shared the news. And what Grant had was a slowly growing, undetected, ascending aortic aneurysm, which means there's this ballooning in the upper part of the aorta as it comes out of the heart. And this um, had been silent probably for years. It ruptured, uh, and he would have bled out uh, quite rapidly. Some of the blood went into the sac surrounding the heart, 
uh, which would have put pressure on the heart such that his heart would not have been able to beat against that pressure. And it fits with what I was told happened at the stadium. He had this sudden chest pain and p- passed out. And um, I at least have the consolation that this was probably fairly painless um, and that once he had passed out, um, honestly, it was it was over. And no number of chest compressions or shocks or really anything would have made any difference at that point. This was a pretty um, catastrophic event. You're very familiar with this uh, this medical uh, diagnosis, this medical procedure. And so you believe that this absolutely was just uh, very natural and had been just sort of waiting to happen inside Grant, it sounds like. Yeah, this was unrelated to the stresses of his work at the World Cup. Uh, as difficult as that was, uh, you know, I don't think that was related. Um, this was unrelated to COVID or any vaccination. This was um, a natural event. Um, there are certain diseases like Marfan syndrome and other genetic conditions that uh, are risk factors for this. And Grant had some features of Marfan syndrome. It was something that had been raised by his primary care doctors, but it just wasn't, there wasn't that much going for it. And so he never had any screening. And I, you know, I wouldn't have ordered it myself based on what I knew. Um, But we are going to be getting that kind of testing now because it's going to have implications for Grant's brother um, and whether he needs to be screened for these things as well. So you discuss this very clinically, but I can't imagine that you were able to accept this very clinically. What was it like for you on Friday night? Uh, um, I just felt sick and terrified and I was, I just wish I could have been there. I didn't get to say goodbye. And he didn't get to say goodbye to you either. That's That has to be one of the most hurtful things of all. You know, a good friend of yours and mine, Michael McCambridge, texted me and said, these two people had one of the greatest marriages I've ever seen. And, and I had to agree with him, even though I don't know you guys as well as many others of your friends. Grant talked so lovingly of the work you were doing. He almost laughed at people thinking he had an important job, you know, because he knew that you had such an important job, not just in the COVID era, but in many ways in dealing with infectious diseases. He was like your biggest fan. And I just, I can't imagine what it, what it must be like. And, and I guess I would just ask, so in in the way that this happened, do you find any consolation at all in the fact that it either happened doing what he absolutely loved in the event that was his favorite event in the world, or does that not really register and or matter? It matters. Um, I still would rather this had happened at home in New York um, with me around. I wish I had been the person doing the chest compressions and the CPR. And at the same time, I don't know that I want to say second best because there's no such thing as best in a situation like this, but um, that was the second best place for him to have something like this happen, surrounded by friends, colleagues doing what he loved um, at the event he really loved. When I spoke to him about covering the World Cup in Qatar, as you know, um, and obviously have been living with this, he went to Qatar several uh, weeks, several months ago and reported on uh, some of the things that he saw that just didn't seem right, which is all of the deaths 
uh, by stadium workers in rushing this World Cup community together, building eight stadiums in record time. And once he got there, obviously um, wearing uh, an LGBTQ rights shirt um, to one of the games, to the game between uh, the United States and Wales and being detained for a while before the game. And I asked him before that happened, I said, aren't you at all worried a little bit? And it, more importantly, is Celine worried? And he said, Celine's been in a lot more dicier places than I am right now. <laughs> and can you just explain about that and about sort of some of the places you've been and whether indeed you were at all worried about Grant when he went over to Qatar? Um, I, I had some worries actually more so with his um, prior trip to Qatar where he was doing reporting on migrant workers. Um, that did have me a little worried. Some of my friends have been um, thrown into prison while working overseas for the most benign of things like taking photos um, while on a jog of just the wrong thing. And so the idea that he was going over there to do this kind of reporting, which would be so politically sensitive, that did have me concerned. Um, I was less worried about the World Cup itself, um, in particular because there, it's such a large event. There are so many journalists there. Um, I, I, I was more worried about his health just because he in general just works himself so hard during these events and every time he would get sick um the combination of just exhaustion and and being around so many other people who of course you know right now it seems like everybody has some sort of cold or another um i had sent him over there with tons of covid tests and some other um medications in case he got sick uh, so I was worried about that, but, you know, Grant and I both, um, did a lot of work overseas in many different places, um, that others might not be comfortable going to. Um, I worked in Soweto in South Africa, which is, uh, this township near Johannesburg, um, for a long time, would be driving in and out of there all the time on my own. And, um, you know, this is a place where there are a lot of carjackings. It's the highest rate of rapes in the world. The woman who, um, photographed Grant for his jacket book cover for the Beckham experiment, um, was a South African woman. It was taken when we were there and, uh, she was carjacked and murdered soon after taking that photo. So, you know, this is, um, these are tough places. And, um, you know, later on I was in, um, West Africa and Guinea during Ebola as an Ebola aid worker. And Grant was always really supportive of me taking those risks and, and doing the work I did. And I was not going to stand in the way ever of, of um, him doing what he was passionate about. I think it was really important to both of us to do that kind of work. I take it then you believe that there was no foul play involved in his death. Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. This was a condition that had been brewing probably for years, uh, based on what I was told by the medical examiner. There was some scarring uh, in the um, aneurysm. Um, and so this was just something that was undetected. Most of the time, these things are undetected until there's a bad event. Um, it's just that they're pretty rare. So it's not like we go looking for them. And uh, no, I, I don't think there was any kind of uh, foul play at all here. But on Friday night, that thought had to be going through your mind at least a little bit based on some of his experiences over there. It had crossed my mind, but I, I, it wasn't something I entertained seriously. Um, and honestly, my first two thoughts were either that he had had a pulmonary embolism, which is a blood clot that goes to your lungs. So either a massive pulmonary embolism or uh, an aortic rupture, um, aortic, um, dissection or, or aneurysm. And, you know, it ended up being number two. Um, 
it's, it's what fit the description I had gotten of what had happened. As you began to process this, you know, I, it, it's so hard to imagine what you must be thinking, what you must be going through. But as you try to process this, and then you saw him um, on Monday, you know, after he came back, was it difficult for you to see uh, your husband not alive? I can only imagine. You know, I'm probably better prepared than most for something like that. Um, having been trained as a, as a physician, having had to declare people dead before, having um, done anatomy lab. Um, but at the same time, it's so different when it's your own family, your own husband. And when I saw him, um, they had him covered with a blue shroud um, revealing just his face you could just see the outline of his body underneath um he looked really pale a bit mottled um he looked like he might have been sleeping but was just so still and um i'm just really thankful that my family could be there with me um to do that Celine, if we could just talk about Grant, the the person for a minute, I think I have been so touched, impressed by the outpouring of love for him by his many colleagues, by people who didn't even know about him. When I wrote a section of my Monday morning column about him, you know, so far I've had over a hundred emails about Grant Wall, the vast majority of which come from people who never knew him, never met him, but just really admired him and admired what he did. Have you gotten that sense? And what has it been like for you to see the overwhelming rush of support and love for your husband? Oh, it's been such a... Um... It's meant so much to me. Um, people have reached out in every which way possible. Uh, it's been a bit overwhelming. In fact, one of my friends, um, she came over Friday night and spent uh, two nights with me all the way through Sunday and was manning the phones, handling all the text messages and emails and everything that was coming through. Um, at one point she said, I think there's like 12 messages coming per minute. <laughs> Um, uh -huh. yeah, and I haven't been able to read all of them yet, um, but to know that he was so loved, it really does, it doesn't make the pain go away, but it, it, it really does help. You know, I think most people will think of Grant as this great sports writer and this sort of voice of soccer in the United States. And honestly, what I'll always remember about him is when I covered the World Cup with him in 2010, how welcoming he was for somebody else, maybe a new convert, maybe a new disciple <laughs> to, to, to basically spread the word about U.S. soccer. And I always got this sense that you know, because I had read about this once. He went to Argentina when he was a student at Princeton, where you guys mm -hmm. met. And he went to Argentina and he did his senior thesis on, you know, fans and the soccer culture in Argentina, if I'm not mistaken. And I always yep. thought, I always thought that he thought that that was possible in the United States, that one day if he just worked and he just he spread the gospel enough that maybe one day that could be the case in the United States. What's your sense of what drove him to be so uh, dedicated uh, to writing about soccer, particularly in a country where soccer was not football, it's not the NBA, it's not, it's not baseball? 
Yeah, Grant was really not driven by fame or popularity or those kinds of things. Um, he wanted to cover soccer because he loved soccer. And he loved that it was the world sport, the world sport. And he loved the culture of it. He loved the politics of it. He loved that it was a way for people to share their experiences around the world. He loved the rivalries, whether it was Boca River in Argentina, and he took me to a Boca game. Um, he introduced me to Argentina, and we went many, many times over the years together. This is adoptive, adoptive country. Um, but I think it, it was bigger than sports for him, um, and I think that's why he loved soccer so much. Um, what do you want people to know about Grant Wall? I think many people have spoken about his kindness, his generosity. Um, Grant was the kind of guy who knew when a friend was in crisis or a family member was in crisis and when he needed to drop everything to be there for them. He was, um, it was very important to him to mentor the next generation, um, to support women and people of color and LGBTQ folks um, who were journalists, who were others in, in his sphere. Um, you know, I, I, I think he took a lot from his, his mom and another early mentor, Gloria Emerson, who were really important influences on him. Um, Helen, his mom, was a feminist. And I think Grant really lived up to that, um, not just in terms of feminism about being equality for women, but really a broader sense of just equality for all. And, um, Gloria was also really important. Um, she, Gloria Emerson was a New York Times uh, war correspondent in Vietnam and in her later years um, had taught some courses at Princeton and uh, lived off campus. And Grant would go visit her um, every weekend, bringing jelly donuts and cigarettes um, to Gloria when she was recovering from a hip fracture. And eventually I would tag along on those trips too. And she was just this really tough lady. And I think a lot of how he thought about journalism and um, standing up for people, uh, those untold stories, those people who had been marginalized or exploited or left behind, that was a lot of what Gloria did herself in her career. And I think that had a tremendous influence on Grant too. How much influence do you think his brother Eric had on his stance? And Eric, Friday night, tearfully uh, posted on social media that Grant had worn the rainbow shirt to the soccer game in Qatar because of him. There's no question that was part of the story. Um, Grant, it was really important to Grant to show support um, to every member of his family in every, any way that he could. And that was uh, a really important way um, for him to show support for his brother. Um, two other things I was curious about. In, in the future, when people think back about Grant, I think they're going to think of, as you say, a very kind person, a person who really believed in mentoring, who believed in mentorship, but who also was the most influential voice um, on soccer in the United States. Grant, you say, did not want to be famous, but how do you think he would feel if he were being, uh, if the tribute was that he was the most significant voice on soccer in the United States? I think he would be um, so honored I think he would be glowing with pride that not just for himself, but really for the idea that he had helped grow soccer in the way that he has in this country. Um, but Grant still had that 
Midwestern um, humility um, and never had a big head, wasn't, um, w- w- would have looked at this as an opportunity to, to bring others up behind him. Um, Celine, I want to end by just asking you about Grant the person and 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 also, as you say, the impact he had on others and just say as horrible as this must be, I, I cannot imagine uh, how how painful this must be. Part of you must be filled with pride that there are people who view Grant uh, as the most important influence in their professional lives. So as difficult as this is, is this something that you think may be able to help you in the coming days, weeks, months, uh, deal with what obviously is such a, a difficult time? Yeah, I I am so proud of him. I am so proud of him. I am proud to have been his wife, to have been his best friend. And I'm just so happy that his legacy will continue to live on, that he will be remembered um, as the person he was and for what he did. Dr. Celine Gounder, thanks so much for joining me. And uh, I know I'm joined by everyone who knew Grant and everyone who didn't know Grant in saying uh, our hearts just go out to you. Thank you, Peter.